Deathloop's Black Reef changed the way I play games and made me behave in a way that's not in my nature. The role I inhabit is that of a ghost, entering a scenario to achieve an objective and leaving with clean hands and conscience. I'm the pebble thrown into water that makes no ripples. And yet, in Deathloop, I murdered hundreds of Eternalists and I felt good about doing it. The allure of Black Reef's daily absolution, which wipes the slate clean for each new time loop, was difficult to resist, and killing became second nature. But this leads you to ask, when nothing matters, how do you give your actions meaning? That's where developer Arcane Leon's gameplay design comes into play, and killing with abandon becomes killing for a reason, to break the loop. Oh, what was that? Whew. Whew. That was one ridiculous nightmare. Ah, oh, I gotta stop drinking. The mechanics of Deathloop are constructed so masterfully that there's a tangible sense of growth both in-game and out of it. But what's most impressive about Deathloop is that it's also an introspective game. It's arcane deconstructing its own brand of open-ended action. The systems are presented as digestible and the game subtly pushes you to put the pieces together so you can truly appreciate how it all ticks. It's a game where observation and dynamic thinking go hand in hand with shotgunning goons in the face and it delivers bombastic thrills with intelligence and elegance in equal measure. At the heart of the game is Colt Vaughn, a man simultaneously adrift in time and stuck within it. He wakes up on a beach with no memory of how he got there or what's really going on. However, what distinguishes him from the other hedonistic denizens of Black Reef is that he's able to retain his memory between loops. And very soon he discovers that a strange element called Residuum can be harnessed to give his arsenal of weaponry and supernatural abilities permanence too. Deathloop is a fascinating mashup of styles and vibes. Underpinning the world is a kind of retro future science that is incredibly effective at giving the world texture. Think time travel by way of 1960s computers that fill a room and look like they have less power than an original iPhone. Complementing that is an element of the supernatural that is essentially time science harnessed by a mad genius to give a chosen few the ability to do things like teleport, link the fate of other people together, or become almost invisible amongst other things. These abilities are bestowed to the visionaries, an eclectic group of elites that the rank and file are sworn to protect so that their life of indulgence can remain eternal. Colt's goal is to kill these visionaries and in doing so break the time loop. The rub is that it needs to be done in one day, a single loop. Easier said than done, given that the game operates on a night and day cycle, where over the course of the loop, each visionary has their own routine and life to lead. Complicating matters further is the fact that the visionaries know Colt is out to get them, and in fact, all of them have some sort of pre-existing relationship with him. Welcome to the Ramblin' Rock Club. For years I've seen them big spanking hands, Colt. No re-rolls in my house. One in particular, Juliana, takes it upon herself to be the thorn in Colt's side. She serves the role of antagonist, but the situation is clearly complicated between them. Their interpersonal dynamic is placed front and center to drive much of the narrative and characterization, and both characters are realized exceptionally well. Juliana is the voice in Colt's ear and also over Black Reef's loudspeakers, and she does her damnedest to get under his skin. She picks at him in a way that only someone with a deep personal connection to you can, using insight into his personality and history to constantly undermine him and poke at his neuroses. And yet, there's also a sweetness to their interactions at times, like a couple in the heat of an argument, remembering for just a moment why they care about each other. In a very real sense, Juliana is a pure agent of chaos. It's worth pointing out that the voice acting is absolutely crucial to selling this relationship, and in that regard, it's achieved exceptionally well. I'm done playing this your way. It's the cult show from now on. <laughs> I said Colt show, not Colt. For his part, Colt eventually engages her in the verbal joust and starts getting under her skin. The constant back and forth between the two is a genuine joy to listen to, and the writing is sharp to make the development of their relationship feel natural. Black Reef is split up into multiple districts, and each one is usually home to at least one of the visionaries. Colt's objective is to enter an area, figure out how to get himself into a position where he can kill said visionary and take their slab, an item that gives them one of six unique supernatural abilities. But each of the visionaries is a weirdo. Charlie, for example, has set up a low budget escape room, 
Harriet is hosting a group of wellness sessions that is as sinister as it sounds, while Wenji rarely ever leaves her lab. Deathloop's day and night cycle also means that these visionaries are only available at certain times of the day. Although you can manually progress time to your needs, there's only ever a specific window of opportunity to kill a visionary. That means you need to play through time loops repeatedly, puzzling out a plan to execute it when a time is right. The game makes this more manageable by giving the player visionary leads to follow. You may need the code to a door in one area, for example, but a ledger with that information is being stored in an office elsewhere, so you also kind of get a tour of Black Reef. Through this, you're slowly trained to develop a meticulous understanding of each area in the game. And as your cult grows in strength and capabilities, so too does your proficiency in navigating them. After killing a visionary, you gain a power, which can be used in the following time loops provided you invest Residium into them. Residium can be extracted from charged objects in the environment or from the dead body of a visionary. Spending this resource allows you to hold on to tools between loops. Slab powers are the most essential as they give you a significant ability and killing a visionary repeatedly to take their slab will evolve the power. The shift power, for example, lets you teleport much like Dishonored's blink, but repeatedly killing the visionary wielding it and collecting it will allow you to upgrade the power to let you swap places with an enemy. Trinkets are also littered throughout the world. Weapon trinkets can be used to augment your combat abilities, while personal trinkets enhance cult's physical performance. The presence of these is what makes each time loop consistently rewarding to play through. Sometimes it can be good to do a run through an area or even an entire loop to build your residium balance and collect some more trinkets especially since it's also an opportunity to refine your chosen playstyle a bit more. And since Colt is able to come back from death twice, there is a degree of forgiveness in the game that really encourages you to do wacky things when the opportunity arises. That third death, however, will reset the time loop entirely, so some strategy is also required if you want to make the most of your time. The repetition-based design of Deathloop eases you into creating a flow state that you can enter into and exit from at will. With the character development system, it gamifies trial and error so effectively that failures almost always still feel like small triumphs. This might sound typical of a roguelike game, but Deathloop's gameplay feels entirely of its own brand, and that's because it's built on the foundation of Arcane's domino effect design. That is especially apparent as you uncover dead ends. Documents peppered around the world will provide a small lead on something, which is then marked as a discovery, and the game does an excellent job of creating a breadcrumb trail around Black Reef for you to follow, and it always leads to something meaningful. Whether it's finding the code to open a locked door, or figuring out how to manipulate two visionaries into appearing at the same place at the same time, you're never more than a run or two away from having an epiphany. In many regards, Deathloop is a game about being meticulous, and Arcane has done a fantastic job in making the act of just being in the world, looking around, and listening to it enthralling. It should come as no surprise that Black Reef is absolutely stunning to behold, given the strong sense of art direction that the studio's previous games have had. Each of the four areas of the game has a distinct style, which changes depending on the time of day thanks to lighting and even weather effects. Of particular note are the 60s-esque interiors that are somehow both beautiful and utterly garish in a way that only retro furniture can be. Wooden walls, shocking red pleather couches that look like they would make your ass numb after a minute of sitting on them, and oddly contorted lighting fixtures will stop you in your tracks so you can ogle at how odd they are. But they also fit into the aesthetic so perfectly that you can't help but be impressed by the interior design chops being displayed. Needless to say, Arcane's sense of art direction remains impeccable, and for my money, unmatched. And complementing it is the raucous soundtrack that is as eclectic and as unexpected as the visual stylings. Continuing the mashup of styles and themes, Deathloop transitions effortlessly between disparate styles to suit the needs of the moment from a cinematic standpoint, but also has you tapping your feet along to the chaos happening on screen. Deathloop's gunplay is weighty and satisfying, and a great deal of the thrill that comes from trading lead is elevated by the brilliant funky soundtrack. The final piece to Deathloop's gameplay puzzle is multiplayer, which manifests itself in two distinct ways. The first is technically not multiplayer, as it sees an AI-controlled Juliana invade Colt's game to try and assassinate him. At random points, the game announces that Juliana has invaded and lock the exit points out of the area. The only way to get out is hack a specific point to unlock the exit tunnels. But to do that, you usually have to go through her. These moments are genuinely terrifying especially when you're on a good run. Juliana is capable of masking her appearance to look like any random Eternalist, 
so she could really be anywhere and anyone. Of course, a human player, someone on your friends list, a random person on the internet, or even you can choose to protect the loop by assuming the role of Juliana. As the hunter, you invade Colt's world to kill him. And the ability to mimic NPCs is unique to Juliana and extremely versatile especially if you have a good understanding of the world. The sense of tension this introduces to gameplay is exhilarating, as you never know when a Juliana could appear to turn your world upside down. It harkens back to the kind of hide-and-seek multiplayer introduced in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and the PvP of the Soulsborne games, and it works really well within Deathloop. Of course, you can opt not to allow people to invade you too if you'd prefer a purely single-player experience. Perhaps the most laudable part of Deathloop is how it takes so many seemingly disparate things and creates harmony between them. Gameplay systems that feel isolated become pieces of a bigger puzzle, and when you see how they seamlessly connect together, you realise just how special of an achievement it really is. Similarly, on paper, the different aesthetics should be like oil and water, but they come together effortlessly to be part of a greater whole. And for me, that's what Deathloop is really about. By standing back and looking at the bigger picture, the uncharacteristic choices and the unexpected behaviours feel necessary, essential even. Maybe it's just what I need to believe to give all that killing meaning, but when I began the final loop and carved a perfect, bloody path through Black Reef's visionaries in a single day, I made no ripples. Juliana. Juliana, you there? Juliana, I remembered your name. 